monetary policy announcements, data releases, and the first week of December, all coming up in the week ahead with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Hello, Mr. Mason, and welcome back. Thank you for joining us once again. As we look at the week ahead, let's start with the start of December coming up. It's usually the busiest time. Will this be the case this time? After quite an end, uh, end to last week, it's a big week ahead on the economic calendar. Uh, there's a mass of economic data for the markets to consider. From Asia, we've got private sector PMI numbers out of China. Over the weekend, MBS sector number, PMI numbers were released. And on Monday, the markets prefer Kaisin manufacturing PMIs in focus, you know, any contraction and expect risk aversion to hit. Um, from Australia, on Monday, we've got also manufacturing numbers and uh, gross corporate profits to look at. Um, really, however, you know, it's trade, retail sales and GDP numbers for the Aussie dollar. Um, the RBA interest rate decision on, on Tuesday comes ahead of those key numbers. You know, I think the RBA probably would have wished for, a, for an extra week, really, um, to digest the numbers before delivering its interest rate decision. Out of the Eurozone, you've got private sector manufacturing numbers and service sector PMI numbers. You know, these are largely finalized numbers, so shouldn't have too much of an impact. Out of Germany, however, factory orders, industrial production and trade data will provide direction through the second half of the week. Um, moving across to the, to the UK, it's private sector PMI numbers, but they're finalized numbers. And, you know, they really did disappoint the Prudia numbers last week. So, you know, expect the pound to be relatively resilient to the numbers um, as focus continues to be on UK politics in the general election. Across the pond, you've got a mass of data, um, you know, private sector PMI numbers. The ISM survey is the market's preferred one. So expect movements in the dollar on Monday and Wednesday and on Wednesday in particular with the ISM non-manufacturing. And you've got ADP non-farm employment change numbers on Wednesday as well. Going across to, you know, Friday, it's non-farm payrolls and wage growth. Um, those are going to need to hold fairly steady um, for the markets to remain convinced the economy is on a solid footing. Um, there's also economic sentiment numbers out on Friday as well to, to give the, the market something else to consider. So a mass of data, um, you know, and there's monetary policy thrown in through the week. Um, just to keep the market on the toes. And then let's not forget geopolitics. Um, that, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. It looks like being a very busy week with all the data releases from around the world. Uh, meantime, the politics is still going on in the background. Um, can we expect any surprises? It's been quite a year for the markets. You know, geopolitics has continued to grip the markets, particularly the extended US-China you know, trade negotiations. When we consider the fact that, you know, this is a phase one agreement, um, you know, the sheer length of negotiations, you know, questions what's actually going to be within the agreement. Um, the markets of, you know, the US markets in particular have hit record highs over the last week, you know, on news that, you know, the US and China are close. And all of this, despite, um, you know, Trump deciding to sign the Hong Kong bill supporting Hong Kong protesters um, and protecting their rights, you know, and facing the, the prospects of China's wrath in, in response. Will, will the trade agreement, the phase one agreement, really have anything that's going to impress the markets? Or is it really going to disappoint? Is it going to be really diluted? I think that's something to really look out for. You know, and then going across the pond, you've got, you, you got UK politics. We've seen, you know, the Tory, Tory party lead narrow. It's down to 11 points, according to YouGov's Wednesday poll tracker. You know, once that comes into single digits, Corbyn's going to be looking at the possibility of going into number 10, and that's going to really rile the pound. Um, so two possible surprises. Yeah, a really disappointing phase one agreement and Corbyn, you know, taking the lead in the opinion polls, with, you know, with just just over a week left um, before general election. And finally, monetary policy announcements are due shortly. Maybe you'd like to give us your insight on this. On the monetary policy front, the RBA and Bank of Canada are in focus this week. The RBA delivers its mon last monetary policy decision of the year on Tuesday. Um, the last minutes revealed a slightly more dovish tone from the RBA. Um, you know, there were some concerns over cutting rates further and the impact on consumer confidence and ultimately spending um, that remains uncertain for the RBA and is, is really a requirement to support you know, the economy and growth projections. It could be an interesting one. If we looked at the employment figures from the week prior, you know, they were quite disappointing. Um, and if we look at, you know, personal credit figures, um, 
that were released on Friday, you know, there was a 0.6% fall in personal credit and a, and a fall in business credit as well, um, suggesting that even in the low interest environment, you know, consumers aren't borrowing. Um, that might be a good thing from the RBA who, who've got concerns over household debt, but that might limit spending when you, you know, when you consider wage growth being quite tepid. So there's a bit of uncertainty over what lies ahead for the RBA. As I mentioned, you know, we've got retail sales, trade data and GDP numbers for the Aussie, you know, in the second half of the week. So the RBA is not going to be privy to any of those numbers um, on Tuesday. So that's going to be particularly interesting. On Wednesday, we've got the Bank of Canada. You know, there was also Dover's talk in their last minutes. Um, you know, the Bank of Canada taking a more cautious stance on the economic outlook. Um, Bank of Governor Pollers, however, spoke in the week prior of rates sitting at the right levels, you know, to support the economy, which provided some support to the loony. Um, we saw the national rail strike, you know, come and go. You know, was that short enough to avoid, you know, some concern, generating some concern for the Bank of Canada? Um, the big numbers are really going to be on, you know, later today at the time of recording. You know, we're waiting for the GDP numbers out of Canada. So however those numbers turn out, that's going to have a material influence, you know, come Wednesday. That was The Week Ahead with Bob Mason of FX Empire. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next week.